total surface area in that case means adding up the areas of all the surfaces. For a cube, that means adding up the surface area of all six faces. For a sphere, like a football, you want to know how much area the material used measured. Today, we'll begin with classifying our solids. Classifying 3D figures, which are solids, if you, were place, if you were to place these solids into two groups, what would these groups be? Great. If you said polyhedron and non-polyhedron, well done. Let's look at what a polyhedron is. Polyhedron is a solid with flat faces, which means each face is a polygon. Do you remember what polygons are? your square, your rectangles, those are samples of polygons. All right, so let's look at our groups. So we have our polyhedron groups, and you'd see those solids over there with polygon faces, and then you have your non-polyhedrons, your cylinder, your sphere, and your cone. Over here you'd have your cuboid, your prism, well, your cuboid is a, pris is a prism, and then you'd have your pyramid. Let's look at some nets of solids and see if you can tell me the solid that would come from each of these nets. So before we even look at the nets, let's see what a net is. A net shows what a 3D solid could look like if unfolded and laid out flat. So our first net is up. Can you name the 3D solid with this net? Did you say cube? Awesome job. What about this one? I'm sure you got it. Let's see what it is. Yes, it is a square base pyramid. Awesome. Now, as we said before, remember the net is, if you were to open up that solid and lay it out flat, that's what the net would represent. So let's look at the nets together again. So you have the net of the cube. As you can see, it's made up of squares, and you have the net of the square base pyramid, which would have a square, and it would have the triangles, which would form that top of the, of the solid. Then you have, I didn't give you this one. Can you tell me what that is? Great job. It's a cylinder. Anyone can tell me this one? Awesome. You guys are awesome. This is a triangular prism. So these are nets of four types of solids that we, are, we might be working with today. Let's explore. You, you are an engineer at an advertising agency. You're asked to determine how much fiberglass material we will, ne we'll, will be needed to cover a cuboidal frame sign for a client who specifies that all faces must be covered or must be used. Now let's look at this a little bit. So you're now asked to make, to use fiberglass to cover this frame. So you're out there in the world and you're awesome, you're an engineer, and you have this metal frame that you need to put ad some advertisement on. Now fiberglass comes in a fabric-like, um, what you call that, roll that you'd use to stretch across this frame to now create your cuboidal awesome design. What would you think you'd need to do? What math concept would you be applying here? Yes, you would have to figure out the total surface area of that particular cuboidal frame in order to be a very good engineer in this instance. So let's look at our first cuboid or cube. 
and then let's look at this one. So what's, which one of the cuboid would you use to make this sign? Yes, I'd go with the cube. So let's look at the cube. What shape are the faces that make up this cuboid? So just before I forget, a cube is a special type of cuboid. Why is it special? All its faces are congruent. They're all the same. So all the faces of the cube are squares. So it is a cuboid, but it has faces that are identical in how they look. And that's why it's a special cuboid. So as I said before, all the faces of the cuboid are made up of squares. If we're to look at another type of cuboid, the faces here are made up of rectangles and squares. Now, since we decided that we're going to use a cube to construct our sign, which our, our client has specified, we now need to pay attention to the attributes, to the, to the features that make the cube unique. They have six congruent or same faces. We already established that. And your cuboid, as you can see here, the other cuboid has three pairs of congruent or same faces. So, so you'd have this face would be congruent to the one that we're not seeing. Remember, we said earlier that in a 3D figure, all the faces are not seen at once. So this would be congruent to this. This here would be congruent to that. And this would have a congruent face to the back of that. Hence the three pairs of congruent or same faces. Now, we said that we wanted to calculate the total surface area. Calculating total surface area of a cube, this is what it would look like. The area of one of the face would, would be the length times the width, because I know you know how to calculate the area of a square. So it's length times width, or some persons may say length squared, same. So we have A representing the length here and the width, which is the same. So the surface area of the cube would be six faces with the area A squared. Now, if we were to use another type of cuboid, which would be this one with the three pairs of congruent sides, we now have to pay attention that this length is different from this and from this. Therefore, we now have the surface area of the cuboid would be 2AB plus 2BC. So we'd have to find, so this represents the two congruent rectangles, which is the length and the width is, a, is BA. And for this one, the length and the width is BC. So we have two of these rectangles, two of these, and two of these. So in total, we have six faces on this cuboid, and we have accounted for all six faces. So your total surface area has to do with finding the area of each face, and then summing the area of all the faces of that solid to give you the total surface area. All right, so we're going to come back in a few minutes and talk about total surface area some more. Thank you for tuning in.
please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. For the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 Tip Protect yourself and Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before during and after you prepare food before eating after toilet use when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste covid 19 tip protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, 
before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your... Welcome back, students. Awesome to still have you with us. So, what did we do again? We looked at some nets, remember? We looked at the nets and we talked about how these nets were made up of polygons and how these nets came together to form solids. Good, and today we're looking at total surface area. What is that again? It is all the area that is covered on a solid. So if you can see, remember when I was trying to show you on the diagram on the screen how each, this type of cuboid had two, three pairs of congruent faces? Let's look at it a little bit more. So this face is A, that means this face is also A. We have a B face here, we have a B face here, C is here, and we also have a C here. So let's make that C correct there. So you have three pairs, my fingers touching a pair, my fingers are touching a pair here, and my fingers are touching a pair here. So we have three pairs of congruent faces. This one is not a cube, but it is a cuboid. So, let's see. If we were, so that explains why we have, this one would be, well, if I, I had to label the sides. So since I didn't label the sides, it would be this side multiplied by this, because you'd have to go back to your fundamentals where you now look at the area of this rectangle or square, whatever that shape is, of the face. So you'd have to remember those fundamental concepts that you would have learned prior to total surface area. So we're going to look at another activity. Now you're a party store owner, recently purchased a cylindrical gas tank to store helium. You know how it is. You have lots of balloons and you have to have your own helium to, to make sure that when they come to, for their party stuff, you are able to fill up all your balloons. You are hired to paint. So I am the, you're not the owner. You are the person who is now hired to paint that helium tank because the owner refuses to waste his or her money. So to prevent rusting, you're going to have to install this tank, by, but you're going to paint it first. What would you need to know about the tank in order to purchase the minimum amount of paint to cover all the surfaces of the fuel tank? You thought about it? Awesome. So tell me what it is. Yes, of course. The total surface area of the tank is what we need to consider. So as you know, a cylinder which this, this looks pretty much like the tank. So the cylinder has this curved surface and it has what? As you can see, it has, if I were to set it like this, this is a circular face and another circular face. So it has circle, 
for this face and a circle for this and this curved one. Now let's look at this question a little bit more. Do you know how to calculate the surf total surface area of a cylinder? I know you do. But first we're gonna look at the net. Let's just look at it together. Let's look at the net of this particular solid. As we pointed out before, it consists of two circles. And if I were to cut one side and open it up and lay it flat like what we said initially, we would have had a rectangle. So the, the shapes that we're working with for this solid are circles and a rectangle and a rectangle. As I said, your fundamentals, your basics will have to come into play now. So you'd have to know how to find the area of a circle and the area of a rectangle. Now, very, very important. When you open up this, this net, you will realize that the circumference of the circle is also the length of one side of your rectangle. As you can see here, the length of the rectangle is equal to the circumference of the base. Now, what do you use to find circumference of a, of a circle? Correct, 2 pi r. We look at 2 pi r, so 2 pi r now becomes not only the circumference of that circle, but it is now one of the, the, the sides of our rectangle. So the width of the rectangle is the height. So I'm closing up my net, it will look like this. The height would be this, this measure here from the base to the top of the solid. So that is our height. And as you can see, the total sur surface area of the cylinder would be the area of the circle on top, the circle on the bottom, plus the area of the rectangle. And your area of a circle is pi r square. So you'd have pi r square plus pi r square. And then the area of the rectangle, as we mentioned before, one side would be 2 pi r, which is the same as the circumference and the height of that cylinder. So if we were to simplify what we have here, we would have 2 pi r square plus, because we have pi r square here, plus another pi r square. When you add those, you'd get 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h. And if we were to factorize what is common between these two terms, our expressions would be, our expression would be 2 pi r. And what we'd have left is r from here and h from there. So this now becomes your simplified formula for finding the total surface area of your cylindrical gas tank. So just to let you know, total surface area is practical, it's real. It just depends on what you'd want to find out in real life. So I know a lot of times we think that, you know, math is abstract, but math is very practical. And ev every concept has its place. So total surface area, could be used if you were a painter. Now, do I? As you can see here, this is just now to let you let you see exactly where we're coming from. Your radius is here, and you would have been given these, or you'd have been asked to determine them, depending on the question. All right, so we're gonna to move to activity three. But before we go to activity three, remember to send your questions to us on Twitter at Television Jamaica, J-A-M, and Facebook at Television Jamaica using the hashtag TVJ Schools Not Out. We'll be going on a short break. See you in a few, in a few.
doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare food. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. 
avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. Welcome back, everyone. Now, just for those who are just joining, let's look at what we were doing before we left. We were looking at total surface area. We are looking at how to find the total surface area of solids. And we would have said that we'd need to identify the faces of that solid and then determine the area of each face. And it is a totaling of all those faces that would give us the total surface area of a solid. We also spoke about how practical and meaningful it is um, for engineers, for persons who decorate things that are solids. So they would have to be able to determine the total surface area in order to purchase material. So those are just some of the applicable ways in which the concept of total surface area can be used. Even if we're looking at total surface area for a plain shape, we would look at for a two dimensional shape, for, for instance, your floor, how many tiles would be used to cover this floor it has to do with the total surface area of this of that two dimensional shape. However, let us continue and look at activity three. Now, this is a sample question from the CSEC curriculum. We have two diagrams here. And as you can see, the diagrams are cylindrical. So let's read. The diagram not drawn to scale shows two cylindrical water tanks, A and B. Tank B has a base diameter of eight meter and a height of five meters. Okay, I don't really want you to see that yet. So let's, let's look at it. If you were asked to find the total surface area of the cylinder, of cylinder B. What would you do? Remember what we said? We said that we, in order to find the total surface area of a solid, we'd have to determine the faces that are there. Remember earlier we looked at the net of a cylinder. Can you tell me how that net look again? Good. So we'd have, you know, not drawn to scale, but we'd have a circle and we'd have a rectangle. So, and we'd have another circle, that's correct. So we'd have the top and the base of the cylinder. We'd need to find the area of the circle. Who remembers how to find the area of a circle? Great. So the area of a circle can be found by using this formula. That's supposed to be a two, it looks a little bit Where Let's change that. So two. Now on the question, normally the pi, the, what the value of pi is given. So we'd have, we're gonna use pi to be 3.14. So if we're using pi to be 3.14, we'd substitute the value. Now what is the radius of this? Remember it's B, so B has five for the height and eight for the diameter. So what is the radius in this case? Remember now, the radius is half the diameter. So we know that if the diameter is equal to eight meters, then the radius is correct. It's four meters, it's half the diameter. Great, so let's substitute. So we'd have 3.14 for pi and we'd have to multiply the radius by itself because that's what that square means. So we'd have four meters, whoops, that's not four, that's three. Four meters multiplied by four meters. So we'd have, that is how we find the area of the circle. What would that work out to be? So we know four times four multiplied by itself is 16. So we can rewrite it or we can do all the multiplication at once. So this would be 16 meters squared. An area is a squared, is measured in a squared unit. So we'd calculate that and we'd get that there, which we'll do shortly. So we will find, so we have the area of, 
we're not even going to do this. I'm going to show it to you in total, but for now, so this would give us the area of one circle. But we have how many circles in this particular solid? We have two circles. Therefore, we're going to have to give you two multiplied by whatever we're going to use for one circle. And that would give us the area of the circular part or the circle faces. Let me, let me say it correctly. The circle face, the circular faces that we have, this would have given us the area for that. But that's not it all. That's not all. We now have this curved surface that is opened up into a rectangle. And for this one, remember what we said, this length is also the circumference of this. So what is, how do we find the circumference of a circle? We can use two pi r or we can use pi d. Correct? So, and then this length would have been our height. So because it's a rectangle, we know it's length times width or side multiplied by the other side or the right. So let's go two pi r and we're going to multiply that by height. And we would substitute the values into the equation again or into the expression to give us the value that we're looking for. So we put that multiplied by the radius and the radius is the same multiplied by the height, which is, we're given the height to be five meters. So we now multiply, it's only one, one rectangle. So we'd add what we get here and what we get here to give us the total surface area. So now let's look at it. Oh. That is if you are finding the area of the entire cylinder. And so let's write up what our total surface area is. There is a shorter way to write out total surface area, which I'm sure you guys are aware of. We tend to write TSA. So where TSA would equal Whatever this works out to be, the value of this expression, oops. So we'd have two, three, one, four, point four, or pi value, multiplied by 16 meters squared, plus, so we're gonna put this into a bigger bracket, plus the area of the rectangle, which can be calculated using these values, four meter multiplied by five meter. And when you sum those two, you'd have gotten your TSA, which is your total surface area for the cylinder. Now let's look if you're given something else. So if you're given the area of A to be 314 meters squared, calculate the length of the radius of tank A. So we just worked out the total surface area of tank B because we're given the diameter and we're given the height. So we're given all the, 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 the lengths and the, the measurements, sorry, for that cylinder and we could work out its total surface area. Now what if you're not given the measurements as you can see in diagram A, but you're given the the area of the base. Now remember the base is a circle. So I'm gonna take this off the board. Give me a minute. There you go. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna look at what the area So you're given, this is fine. So you're told that the area of the base, remember what the base is? What shape, what shape is the base? The base is a circle, we're just gonna put it in bracket here, 
the area of the base is equal to 314 squared meters. Okay, so what is the area of the base? It is three, one, four squared meter. What is a formula? How do we find the area of a base, of the base, of a circle? It is pi r squared. What do we do here? What are they asking us to do again? They're asking us to calculate the length of the radius. So the r in or expression here would represent the radius. So we have, if we were to plug in all the values over here, it would give you this value. So the, we can now equate it and we can transpose for r. So we're gonna transpose. We already know that the value for pi is 3.14. We don't have a value for r. We place it back. <clears throat> That's not right. 314 squared meter. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's look. So what is happening to the R to this R squared here? It's been multiplied by 3.14. We want the R all by itself because we're trying we're trying to make R the subject of this equation. So the opposite of multiplication as what is being done here now is division. So we are going to divide both sides by 3.14 because we want R all by itself. We want R to stand on its own. So 3.14 divided by 3.14 gives us one. 314 squared meter divided by, whoa, whoa, whoa. yes, divide by three, 0.14 will give us, yes, it's 100 meter squared. And now this is equal to R squared. Is it R squared that we're looking for? No, we're looking for R. So we'll have to find the square root of both 100 meter squared and R squared. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of M squared is M which equals to R. So R is plus or minus 10, as you can see on the screen, or 10 meters. All right, we will be going on a short break. Thank you very much for tuning in. from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness.
Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor. Welcome back, everyone. I am Tamika Lodge Fenton, and today we're here exploring total surface area. Now, recently, for those who are just joining, we would have looked at what you need to understand about total surface area. It is the coverage of that space. So you need to figure out, we're looking at calculating or determining the total surface area of solid figures. In that case, we'd have to make sure that we realize what type of shape are those solids made of and how to calculate the area of each face that you're interacting with. We looked at the difference with a cube and a cuboid. Your cube would have the faces that are all congruent or all the same. Therefore, if you worked out the area for one face, you'd pretty much multiply it by six or you could add them six times. While another cuboid which has three pairs of congruent faces, you'd pretty much figure out what one face, what the area of one face is, and then multiply that by two for the three pairs that you'd have. All right. Now, we're gonna do another sample question, and then let's see if we can get through it. So, this question says, a farmer constructs a storage tank as shown in the diagram. The slope of the tank consists of a cylindrical body of height 3.5 meter, meters and a diameter 8 meters and a conical roof of vertical height of 1.2 meters. Now we're using pi as we were previously using the question before as 3.14. <clears throat> So you're asked to calculate the slant height of the roof of the tank as the, the farmer wishes, wishes, sorry, wishes to cover that slant distance with something. So well, how, do you, how do you think you'll calculate the slant height of the roof of the tank? All right, so the first thing we want to look at is exactly what that tank, what the roof of that tank looks like. So we're looking at a cone and we're trying to determine the distance from this point here, your apex, your to the base of your shape, as you can see there. So remember this Pythagoras theorem. If you were here, if you have been with us from we started, You'd remember that in order to access total surface area, there are some fundamental concepts that you must know. We looked at the area of plane shapes, and now for this particular problem or question, we need to figure out, we need to understand what Pythagoras theorem is. Now, Pythagoras theorem states for all right angle triangle, there is a relationship that exists with the three sides. That means if you are to square the hypotenuse, which is your longest side, it would equal the sum of the square of the other two sides. So we have to understand Pythagoras theorem in order to access this particular question. In this case, L, as you can see, would be our hypotenuse. And then your other two sides, we are gonna look at what we use. We, we are using V for one of the sides and R which symbolizes the radius here, because this, this distance is the radius of the circle that we're working with. As you can see, the diameter of the circle is given to be eight meters. And we, remember, we already said that the radius is half the diameter, or the diameter is twice the size of the radius. So the radius is there, so you'd square the radius and you square the other side. That is your vertical height represented by V, which is 1.2 meters. <clears throat> so we'd substitute the values in this equation here. So your V being 1.2 meter 
plus squared plus four meters squared will equal your vertical, the square of your vertical length. And if we were to square them, you'd have 1.2 squared is 1.44 meters squared meters. And four meters squared is 16 squared meters. And then you were trying to determine what, what our length would be, our vertical length, vertical height, sorry, our slant height. All right, so we'd add these, we get 17.44 equal the square vertical length, height. So I, I keep, I keep, height is the same as the length there. Now to find the slant height, we'd have to find the square root of L, of L squared and also the square root of 17.44 squared meter, which would give us 4.18 meter which would give us this slant height. Let's go through it one more time for those who probably didn't follow through with me initially. We would need to know Pythagoras theorem because there is a right angle at the top here. That's what we're using to find the slant height. The slanted height represents the hypotenuse of the triangle. And we'd sub pretty much. We have found the slant height. And then this part now would take us to show the total curved surface area of the tank to the nearest meter is 140 squared meter. Now let's discuss this a little. What is the total curved surface that we're looking at? So for this particular shape or solid that we're looking at, you'd have this curved surface here. Let's, let's make the shape for, for those who are very visual. It's pretty much this. And we're looking at this curved surface along with this. So what I want you to realize is that we're not capturing this circular face. Neither are we capturing this. So we need to determine this area along with this area. And we do this. So the area of the curved surface of the cone would be pi multiplied by the radius multiplied by the slant height, why we needed to calculate that in the first place. And then we'd add it to the area of the curved surface of the cylindrical tank, which is here, which is 2 pi r h. We're given h and we know what the r is we are also given the radius so we pretty much can substitute those values and this would work out to be 52 meet squared meters and this would work out to be 88 squared meters adding those together 140 squared meters thank you for joining us we'll be going on a short break remember remember you Kelke. great Eating after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, 
before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 health center and share your travel history the flu and coronavirus can kill let's protect each other a message from the ministry of health and wellness reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus wash your hands frequently with soap and water cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. 
avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. tip protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before during and after you prepare food before eating after toilet use when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste COVID-19 tip Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick, before, during and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty and after handling animals or animal waste. COVID-19 tip protect yourself and it others. is a practical concept that is used in everyday life several persons require this skill of knowing how to calculate the total surface area so remember when you're finding the total surface area which we commonly call the TSA of any solid you need to consider the faces that make up the solid let us have a look at my desk to see the solids that we're looking at so for your cone, you have this curved surface plus a circular one. For your cylinder, you'd have two circular faces and your curved surface. And remember, we said that these are what? These are non-polyhedrons because they do not have, all their faces are not polygons. Then you have your cube, which you'd have to look at, your square faces. And you have, this is a cuboid, which we have rectangular, faces they're all rectangular i'm not seeing any square here but some cuboids can have a square face pretty much like this one here and you'd have your hemisphere this is what we didn't even look at this but what is this this is a pyramid this is your square base pyramid so you'd have to figure out how to find the area of your triangular face you'd have to determine well count the faces that you have so this is one two three four faces as you can see there is a face from each side of your base you'd have to figure out all of that and this here is a sample of a prism which is a triangular base prism and you'd have to figure out the face which is your rectangular face and your triangular face when you figure out what face make up the solid you would determine what is the area of each face? And then you'd sum these faces in order to give you the total surface area. That is all the area of that solid. So we do thank you for tuning in. We hope that it was beneficial to you. And we do hope that you join us every 
every morning around the same time for different content on things that are most helpful to you as a student and maybe even to adults who are pursuing math. If you have, remember viewers, you can watch this and other lessons live on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel. Remember, you can send your questions and feedback to us on Twitter at Television Jam, Facebook at Television Jamaica, and Television Jamaica's YouTube channel using the hashtag TVJ Schools Not Out. Thank you for tuning in, tuning in with us today. It was a pleasure.